Well, Commissioner Gordon has been one of Batman's most trusted allies, his own son, James Gordon Jr. was a psychotic and crazed villain who posed quite a threat to Gotham. First introduced in Batman Comics in May 1987, this character was created by Frank Miller and Scott Snyder. James Gordon Jr. was often exposed to danger at a young age due to the nature of his father's job, and he eventually went over to the dark side himself. He was considered to be the black sheep of the Gordon family, and he even went as far as attacking his own sister from time to time. While James Gordon Jr. has been an integral part of the Gordon family history, he is a lesser known, relatively obscure character. Let us explore his origins and have a look at the story arcs of this crazed villain. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means an awful lot. Thank you, let's begin. How a psychopathic child grew up to be a twisted and unpredictable villain. James Gordon Jr. was born to Barbara Eileen and James Jim Gordon around the time that they moved to Gotham City. Since Jim Gordon was the police commissioner, he often got into trouble with notorious mobsters and criminals like Carmine Falcone. Falcone once decided to target Gordon's family and sent the hitman Johnny Vitti to kidnap Gordon's newborn son and throw him off a bridge. However, Batman appeared at the last minute and saved the young boy. Barbara then decided to leave Gotham with James Gordon Jr. to keep him safe. However, the young boy continued to be the prime target for anyone who wished to seek revenge against Commissioner Gordon. He was once kidnapped by Arnold Flass, a former member of the Gotham City Police Department. Arnold kidnapped James and tied him in a sack before hanging him off a bridge in Gotham. At the last minute, Arnold's plan failed when Batman came to the young boy's rescue and saved him. After being exposed to such life-threatening situations at such a young age, James Gordon Jr.'s psychopathic tendencies became increasingly visible, and his parents started worrying about him. He took joy in killing animals and then dissecting their body parts as a hobby, and his behavior was quite different from other children. James Jr. also had a sibling, Barbara, who later went on to become the original Oracle, as well as the second Batgirl. When the Gordon family once went on vacation, Barbara's friend Bess Keller had accompanied them. Bess kept teasing James Jr. during their trip, and in a shocking turn of events, she soon went missing in the woods. Barbara had noticed that James was holding on to Bess's keychain after she went missing, and she had implied that James was involved in Bess's disappearance. However, this was never really proven, and James eventually disappeared for a while after he left Gotham City to travel the country. The creepiest comeback, when James Gordon Jr. returns with crazy intentions. James Jr. made a powerful comeback in the Black Mirror comic story arc, wherein he returned to Gotham City as a psychopath with crazy intentions. The first story was set in the aftermath of the final crisis, wherein the Dark Knight was presumed dead and the original Robin, Dick Grayson, took on the role of the vigilante while Bruce Wayne's son, Damien, filled in the shoes of Robin. While Batman does return back, he sets out on a mission to recruit allies around the world while Dick Grayson continues to protect Gotham City. In the first part of the Black Mirror comics, Dick Grayson adjusts to his life at Wayne Tower when Commissioner Gordon pays him a visit to talk about several murders that are being linked to a man known as the Dealer. The Dealer runs a cult known as the Mirror House, wherein he conducts secret auctions for high-tech equipment and prized artifacts. Batman and Gordon work together to uncover the Dealer's crimes, and Dick Grayson finally confronts the villain as he tries to escape on an airplane. After Grayson returns to the Wayne Tower, he asks Alfred to pack his clothes, and he finally decides to move into a new home. He even comments on how much darker the city has become, while Commissioner Gordon gets a phone call from Harvey Bullock on a different side of the city. Harvey tells him that someone has freed all of the birds from the city's aviary and even asks Gordon to come down to the scene. When Commissioner Gordon arrives at the aviary, Harvey tells him that someone hacked into the computer systems to open the cages and free all of the birds. Harvey further asks Gordon to look at the surveillance footage and points out that a man similar to James Jr. was spotted entering the aviary. Gordon asks Harvey to refrain from putting the word out and then returns home to find blood all over the place. While Gordon asks his son to reveal himself, a huge bird feasts on a dead rat in their home, which James Jr. watches from afar. In the second part of the comic, titled Skeleton Cases, 
Gordon rushes to his daughter Barbara and tells her that James Jr. is back in Gotham. They meet at a diner and Barbara gets visibly upset when she learns that her brother is back. She even declares that James is a killer and then she remembers seeing James holding her friend Jess's keychain after her disappearance years ago. When Barbara leaves, James Jr. sits in her seat and greets Commissioner Gordon. James begs his father to hear him out and even says he is sorry for all the pain he has caused to their family by doing bad things. Gordon retaliates by saying that he had tortured some men to death and even burned some men alive at the Wayne JRC and that these crimes are not just bad things. Gordon even mentions Jess, but James states that he had no part in her disappearance or death. James further says that he found some good doctors and is now trying to get better. He admits that he is a psychopath and that he only now understands that this is a clinical condition for which he needs serious medical treatment. James tells his father that he even got into a drug trial program for diaxamine and that he is genuinely trying to get better. While Gordon processes this information, James tells him that he is going to get in touch with Leslie Tompkins for a job where he can help other psychopaths. He asks his father to put in a good word for him at the job and then finally takes his leave. In the meantime, Dick Grayson and Red Robin try to track down the bird poachers who were involved in freeing the birds at the aviary. Though they manage to capture these poachers, Batman feels that they are working for a new criminal in the city. As the story moves forward, Commissioner Gordon finally captures Roy Blunt, who he suspects to be the Peter Pan killer that was murdering children a few years ago. Gordon had been working on this case for years, and he recollects memories from those earlier times as he finally captures Roy Blunt. While working on this case, Commissioner Gordon had once received a call from his ex-wife Barbara, who told him that his doctor wanted to give James a test that detects psychopathy. It was not long before James was accused of killing Bess Keller when the young girl disappeared on a family vacation with the Gordon family. Barbara blamed James for killing her friend, but there was no concrete evidence against him. Presently, Commissioner Gordon interrogates Roy Blunt and learns that he was the real culprit in Bess's murder. In the meantime, Batman also confirms that James was not responsible for setting the birds free from the Gotham aviary. While Commissioner Gordon and Dick Grayson work together in a lab, Gordon seems quite distracted and finally admits that he is worried about James. Gordon says that while James claims to be different now, he does not entirely trust him or his medication. Gordon asks Dick Grayson to meet with James once, but Grayson is soon ushered away to look into a murder case that involves the criminal known as Tiger Shark. Grayson finally arranges to meet with James Jr. and tells him that he is aware of the work he is doing with Leslie Tompkins. While they have a good meeting, we see that James Jr. is still torturing people and even held a man captive in his home. In the next part of the series, titled Skeleton City, Commissioner Gordon visits his ex-wife Barbara, who tells him that James has been a huge help around the house these days. Besides helping around the house, James had also been checking up on his old school friends, and he seems to be doing quite well. Gordon then visits his daughter Barbara and asks her to run some tests on the diaxamine medicine that James uses to treat his disorder. When Barbara looks into the contents of the medicine, she realizes that James had inverted the medicine's formula to increase his psychotic tendencies instead of subduing them. Barbara states that the formula's potency is really low and it will not have a drastic effect on adults. Commissioner Gordon then realizes that James is volunteering at an infant nutrition center with Leslie and that he has plans to infect hundreds of infants with this medicine. Gordon immediately rushes to James's address where he stumbles across a box of items belonging to every single one of James's victims. On top of the pile of items, Gordon spots the keychain that belonged to Bess Keller and he realizes that he had been tricked all along. In the next part, titled Dark Architect, the Joker breaks free from Arkham Asylum while Barbara Eileen is attacked in her hotel room with the use of the chemical compound known as Joker Venom. Barbara is then taken to a hospital while Grayson locates the Joker and asks him about his attack on her. The Joker denies any involvement in the attack on Barbara while James Jr. shows up at his sister's residence. Finally, in the last part of the comic titled the face in the glass, James Jr. kidnaps his sister and takes her away to a secluded location to kill her. Grayson tries to locate Barbara when he gets a call from James Jr. James states that he had discovered that Grayson was covering up for the Dark Knight, which is when he decided to return to Gotham. James seems to believe that empathy is a weakness, and he looks down on Grayson and even calls him the weakest man in Gotham due to his empathetic nature. He then declares that his psychopathy has made him the strongest man in Gotham, and he reveals his plans to create a 
stronger generation by infecting young infants with the diaxamine. Grayson also learns that James had teamed up with the dealer at some point, and he had gotten his hands on the Joker venom by paying an Arkham guard to get it from the Joker. James finally turns to Barbara and prepares to kill her, but she stabs him in the eye and disorients him for a while. In the meantime, Grayson shows up at the secret location and reveals that he had injected a tracer into James when they first met. Grayson and Barbara team up to defeat James, who runs outside and tries to escape by jumping off a bridge. However, Commissioner Gordon shows up at the scene and stops him by shooting him in the leg. Once the situation is subdued, Grayson and Gordon meet to discuss whether they had managed to prevent the infants from being infected with diaxamine. While they ran their tests on the baby formula at the nutrition center, the results were inconclusive and they realize that there is no way of knowing if thousands of infants might grow up to be psychopaths. They state that they only need to wait and see what happens in the future, while the image of a young infant at the end of the comic implies that James may have been successful in his plans. He appeared in the Joker 2021 comic book for a crucial story arc. A younger version of James appeared in the 2021 Joker comics in an issue titled Broken Home, Broken Heart. When Barbara Eileen had moved to Chicago with her son James Jr., Commissioner Gordon had been taking care of their daughter Barbara, or Barbie, who had suffered an attack at the hands of the Joker. In fact, even Commissioner Gordon had been attacked by the Joker and was on leave from the GCPD. While Gordon is on leave, his ex-wife Barbara comes back to Gotham with their son James Jr., who seems to be worried that the Joker will come for him next. While Barbara leaves after a short visit, James stays behind, and Gordon assures him that he is in no danger. However, he soon finds out that James had broken into his office and was going through some confidential files concerning the Joker. Gordon asks James to get out of that room, while the young boy states that he just wanted to see the man that hurt him and Barbie. As the father-son duo has a conversation, Batman breaks into their home to check up on both Gordon and Barbie. The following day, Gordon opens James's bedroom door only to realize that the young boy is missing from their home. Gordon immediately rushes to find Harvey Bullock from the GCPD, who reassures Gordon by saying that it seems like the Joker has disappeared from the city. Harvey promises to keep an eye out for James, and Gordon then gets a ride back home in a police car when they get the news of a man with a gun spotted with a child around the Deanie skating rink. The man seems to be wearing face paint, and Gordon suspects that the Joker has captured his son. He asks the police officer to rush to the scene where they find a man dressed up as the Joker along with James, who also seems to be wearing the same makeup as the Joker. Gordon whips out his gun and prepares to shoot at the man when Batman shows up and tells him that this isn't the original Joker. While Batman deals with the imposter, Gordon rescues his son and the two of them get to safety. Gordon later asks James about what happened and the boy states that the Joker took him away last night. James further swears that the Joker hates their family and that he does not want to see them all together. Gordon knew that some of the witnesses had seen James laugh and get along with the Joker, but Batman interrupted their conversation before Gordon could ask James about this. Batman later gives a gun to Gordon and tells him that they only found James's and Gordon's fingerprints on this gun. Batman further reveals that this imposter only had a fake water gun and that any shots that were fired that night were from this gun. Gordon listens intently as the vigilante states that the imposter was wearing real circus face paint while James was only wearing cosmetics such as fat foundation, concealer, and lipstick that he may have stolen from his sister. Gordon realizes that James was lying to him, and that his own child has been creating trouble for their family. While Batman takes his leave, he suggests that Gordon should get some psychiatric help for James before the young boy does something even more drastic. The demented James Gordon Jr. had a tragic demise. Eventually, James Gordon Jr. died a terrible death at the end of Batgirl Comics issue 49. As the comic begins, we see that James has kidnapped a young woman and he is changing her appearance to make her look like Batgirl. After dyeing her hair and giving her a haircut, James states that she now looks like the Batgirl before he kills her. The comic shows a dark side of James as he hunts women who look like his sister and then murders them. In the meantime, Barbara Gordon, who lives a secret life as Batgirl, tries to figure out the culprit behind these deaths and decides to lay low for a while. A concerned James visits her and genuinely expresses his worries regarding Barbara's safety. While the story continues, James continues to murder more women on one end while also trying to track down the murderer on the other. He does not seem mentally sound as he switches between the personalities of the murderer and the concerned brother who wishes to capture the 
this murder. Moreover, it seems that only one of his personalities is aware of Batgirl's real identity. James targets another young woman who looks like his sister, and he brings her back to his apartment and asks her to put on a Batgirl costume. He then murders her, while ex-Commissioner Gordon tries to get to the root of these serial killings. Gordon realizes that all the victims are natural redheads, while another police officer named Jason Bard checks up on Barbara and talks to her about the Batgirl. While Jason takes his leave, Gordon shows up to check on his daughter and asks Barbara about Jason. Gordon also seems concerned about Barbara's well-being, since she is also a redhead who could be the killer's next victim. While Gordon takes his leave, James watches from the shadows as he sees his dad concerned about his sister. James seems to be talking to himself as he tells himself to go home and that Barbara's well-being is not his concern. In the meantime, Barbara suits up as the Batgirl and tries to figure out the killer's identity from her secret base at the clock tower. She then visits the murder scenes of all these women, and she finally traces them all back to James's apartment, where he has put up a board dedicated to Batgirl. As she breaks into the place, James is shocked to see her, while she attacks him and asks him if he has been killing all the women. James claims that he was only trying to protect her, and that he had only been using this board to connect the dots and find clues regarding the killer. Barbara trusts him and James further tells her that all the murder victims have been living double lives just like her. Moreover, he tells Barbara that the murder locations together form a bat, and that the last location required to complete the pattern is at the lighthouse. Barbara asks James to stay back while she heads to the lighthouse to catch the killer. In the meantime, Gordon also pieces the clues together and heads to the lighthouse. James seems to be conversing with himself, while one side of him reveals that he killed the redheads and the other questions his actions. His killer self says that he had been killing these women due to the hatred he has for Batgirl, and that he only did this for him. James's usual self states that he does not hate Batgirl, and that he can handle the fact that his father loves Barbara more than him. Finally, the other voice in his head states that he did not know that Barbara was the Batgirl, or else he would have never murdered all these women. Eventually, James cannot deal with the fact that he was killing these women all along, and he decides that the only way to protect Batgirl is by killing himself. James tells his sister that he loves her very much before he jumps off the lighthouse and dies. While Batgirl watches helplessly as her brother dies, Gordon appears at the scene and watches his son fall to the ground. As the story ends, Batgirl admits that she once hated James so much that she wanted him to die. And now he has, right in front of her eyes. Since Gordon was not aware of the fact that Batgirl was actually Barbara, he tried to place his daughter under arrest for manslaughter. Barbara does not know how to explain any of this to her father, and she somehow escapes him and finally breaks down as she mourns her brother. I see a different side of James Gordon Jr. in the movie The Dark Knight in 2008. James Gordon Jr. played a minor role in The Dark Knight movie, wherein he was portrayed by Nathan Gamble. When Two-Face, also known as Harvey Dent, realizes that Commissioner Gordon and Batman have failed to rescue Rachel Dawes' life, he sets out to take his revenge. Two-Face primarily blames Commissioner Gordon, and then kidnaps his son, James Gordon Jr., with the intention of killing the young boy. However, Batman intervenes the last minute and manages to save James Gordon Jr., who also very much admires the vigilante. Since he was just a young kid, there was no scope for the movie to explore his psychopathic tendencies, and we saw a seemingly ordinary side of the otherwise deranged villain. Some other major comic book appearances. After the new 52 reboot, James's storyline was tweaked a little, and he was sent to Arkham Asylum for his deeds. However, he managed to escape from Arkham, and then began mentally torturing his sister Barbara, who was also the Batgirl. He even led her to a skating rink, where the Joker had held their mother captive. Batgirl then decided to kill the Joker, and she located him at a church where he was waiting to marry her. James was supposed to save their mother, but he showed up at the church to protect Batgirl, and even lied lied to her about having saved their mother, even if he had no intentions of doing so. After mentally torturing Batgirl from afar, he eventually met with his mother at the Gotham Bay Aquarium and decided to kill her. When Batgirl intervened, James threatened to reveal her true identity to their mother. However, her mother seems to know about this, and she then shoots a gun at her son. A wounded James tried to escape, while Batgirl chased after him. James told Barbara that he hated that their parents always preferred her over him, and he redirected his attention toward killing their mother. However, Batgirl saves her mother by aiming a batarang at James, who loses his balance and falls into the water. Though he does not resurface, James's body was never found, which suggests that he may still be alive. What makes him so dangerous? 
James Jr. was skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat and felt no remorse for people, which made him an extremely dangerous opponent in physical combat. He was also very deceptive, and he could easily manipulate others into believing his lies. He was quite cunning and intelligent, and had managed to cover his tracks or evade the authorities on multiple occasions. Besides having a genius-level intellect, James Gordon Jr. was also in peak physical condition, and could easily defeat his opponents. He was deranged, and felt no empathy towards his victims or anyone in general. From a young age, he had been under the care of various doctors and psychiatrists, but he always managed to break out of mental wards. He suffered from antisocial personality disorder and was essentially a psychopath who did not adhere to society's norms. Conclusion To sum things up, James Jr. was indeed an unhinged character who managed to stir up quite a lot of trouble for the Gordon family in many different instances. Lately, things have been getting quite interesting for him in the DC Universe, and we can most certainly expect another storyline featuring him very soon. And, if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, be safe, and thank you everyone.